Hey, you know, Don Rickles thinks that he invented the insult, but I've been getting insulted since my earliest days in show business, and I have the reviews to prove it. <laughs> now, we put together a few of the barbs that have been thrown at me over the years. I think you'll enjoy it. I've been looking at this segment all week. It's cheaper than shock treatments. <laughs> Give me an A, please, if you don't mind. Let me continue with my act. I appeal to you as a friend. You don't even appeal to me as an enemy. <laughs> you know something? I figured out your style. You work just like Gregory Peck. Yeah, well, Gregory Peck is no comedian. <laughs> Give me an A. <laughs> Tony, you know, you're known as a comedian, and I'm a comedian, but in the field of comedy, we're about as far apart as two people can get. Well, it's very nice of you to say that, Bob. Thank you. I happen to be a world-famous comedian. Mom's Mabley. I didn't recognize you with your teeth in. You mean to tell me you own this place? I sure do, and it didn't come cheap. I had to pay through the nose. It's nice of the man to wait that long for his money. <laughs> now look, pay attention. The big brown cow hangs upside down. The milk falls mainly on the cow. <laughs> I'm not saying what I'm saying. You're not getting any laughs. <laughs> no, Professor, I've come to the conclusion that you're the cream of the idiots. Thanks, sugar. I'll tell you one thing, Bob. Living next door to you sure makes me miss my old neighborhood. Where was that? Next to the monkey yard at Griffith Park Zoo. You know, you got more laughs with your sacks than I got with my jokes. <laughs> Actually, I was just learning to tell jokes in those days. Well, Bob, I uh, finally learned to play the sax. <laughs> I don't know how you women stand it. Why? What do you mean? Well, the mud packs, facials, massages, hours under the hair dryer. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> You're so right. By the way, Antoine said to say hello to you. <laughs> Television is a 21-inch parking lot for used comedians. <laughs> Surely, George, you don't think of me as used. Well, frankly, I hardly ever think of you at all. <laughs> no, I don't understand. You're a singer, and Joey Lewis, one of our great comedians, why didn't they hire a comedian to play the part? What's it to you? <laughs> well, I want you to know what a privilege it is to appear with you here tonight. You've always been to me one of the greatest talents I've ever seen. Well, thank you very much, Troy. And I wish that my mother and father could have been here because, well, they feel the same way. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. And my grandmother and grandfather. I'm a nature lover. Uh, would you like to see my rock collection? Don't open up your head just for me. <laughs> what is it you want? Well, I'm taking over, you know. I'm replacing you. You the new coach? Absolutely. I can't believe it. It's like replacing Air Force One with a skateboard. <laughs> You someone, but I, I can't think of who. Everyone says that, you know. You fully dressed, they think I'm Paul Newman. <laughs> but in my swim trunks, I remind them of Reynolds. Really? Yeah. Bert or Debbie? <laughs> well, what do you think? I think I'll buy an electric blanket. <laughs> I just can't wait to see Debbie Reynolds. She's so beautiful and she can dance and sing. I can't wait to hear Bob Hope's jokes. He'll be brilliant. Now, you see, there's the difference between you and me, Father. I'm expecting entertainment and you're expecting miracles. 